When we think of Alaska, we are all on a journey together. An Odyssean voyage of outward adventure and inner reflection. Reaching toward the world's edge. To that shadowy sea where the sun is hidden and the clouds are born. Where the Earth's subterranean heart beats. Where living creatures flow like clouds from age to age. Where the land sets the terms and humankind conforms. And so to the Alaska Peninsula we come, seeking the limits of the known world at the ends of the earth. The narrow frontier between warm and cold latitudes extends 500 miles from the Alaskan mainland, separating the tempestuous Bering Sea from the Pacific. A cloud-cloaked landscape, the Alaska Peninsula is accessible only by air or water. The mostly treeless peninsula endures a maritime climate described as notoriously miserable. Long winters, cool summers, frequent storms, and sudden bursts of wind called willowogs. So fierce, bush pilots say, they can rip the numbers off a plane. The Aleutian Range, part of the Ring of Fire, comprises the spine of the peninsula, with 20 active volcanoes rising above the glacier-carved fjords of the Pacific coast. Near the base of the Alaska Peninsula, a national park stretches from the Bristol Bay lowlands across to the Shelikov Strait. Lightly visited and little known outside Alaska, Katmai is larger than Yellowstone and Yosemite combined. This is the volcanic heartland of the Aleutian Range. In June 1912, a cataclysmic explosion sent a cloud of ash 20 miles into the sky. Darkness fell on the Alaska Peninsula for three days. Bears were blinded by falling ash and starved to death. Plants and small animals were smothered. Birds coated by ash fell to the ground and died. The salmon run was wiped out for five years. Even the region's prolific mosquitoes were exterminated. A 
A century later, the ash-covered valley floor has cooled and the 10,000 smokes have vanished. But the magma chamber still lies unquietly beneath the cluster of Katmai volcanoes. Even after a landscape has been blasted and reshaped by volcanism, life somehow finds a way to emerge again and evolve. Onkorhynchus nerka, the sockeye salmon, is a creature ruled by instinct rather than memory, and its instinct is to kill itself. Sockeye salmon are anadromous, hatching in fresh water, but spending most of their lives in the salty sea. Most eggs never hatch. Heat and drought kill them. Predators eat them. Sedimentation cloaks them. The current pulls some eggs away. Of the 10% that hatch, only 10% of those fish ever make it to the sea. Birds feed on them, as do other fish. Some even starve. After three or four years in the ocean, preyed upon by seals, sea lions, orcas, and salmon sharks, only 10% survive to return to the streams whence they came. More than 2,000 brown bears live in Katmai National Park. An estimated 10,000 populate the peninsula, making them more numerous than people. These are coastal brown bears, the largest predatory land mammal that yet roams the earth. Brown bears are larger than interior grizzlies, the same species, because of the abundance of food sources near the coast. The big bears use threat displays and signals to avoid fights and establish dominance, like a peculiar vocalizing known as jaw popping, and an exaggerated swagger called cowboy walking. Though much of their diet is vegetarian, the great concentration of giant bears on the peninsula is due to one food source. The bears are so focused on the abundance of salmon that they tolerate close proximity. even ours.
Farther down the peninsula, a giant caldera emerges from the horizon, an ancient stratovolcano that exploded 3,500 years ago and then collapsed upon itself. so remote that more people climb Everest in a year than visit Aniakchak. In 1931, a volcano inside the volcano erupted, attracting the attention of the glacier priest, a Jesuit geologist named Bernard Hubbard. Hubbard described what he saw in apocalyptic terms, a valley of death in which not a blade of grass or a flower or a bunch of moss broke through the thick covering of deposited ash. The caldera itself was the prelude to hell. Black walls, black floor, black water, deep black pit. The walls of Aniakchak even influence the weather, transforming the miserable to the marvelous. Clouds moving in from Bristol Bay are captured and spill over the rim of the caldera, creating a phenomenon called cloud Niagara's. The Aniakchak River exits the caldera through a breach in the walls called the Gates. A crater lake once burst through and drained the equivalent of the entire Mississippi River in only six hours. Today's river has a steep gradient in its short run to the Pacific, dropping a thousand feet in only 15 miles. For adventurous paddlers, it is fast, cold, and dangerously remote. In the fall, when the salmon runs end, 
Bears gather to forage for salmon carcasses. Less nutritious, but still a food source. On the coast, the bears return to their more solitary existence. Humankind has been a part of this landscape for more than 9,000 years. Where the anthroposphere is concerned, nature is not as natural as it looks. Even this distant land has felt the touch of industrial society. Lingering oil from the Exxon Valdez can still be found in the beaches of the Katmai coast, more than 450 miles away from the 1989 spill. Dissolved fallout from burned fossil fuels is preserved in glaciers, which are flushing into the ocean in a colossal meltdown. Climate change is accelerating. Alaska and the Arctic are warming far faster than the rest of the world.
camera's eye can beguile us into imagining that any human impacts would be insignificant on so massive a landscape and on such magnificent wildlife. But what effect will the dramatic climate transformations have on the salmon run, on the bears, on us? The limits of the known world are veiled, but we are not at the ends of the earth. Nature is still busy with experiments. We see but dimly when we contemplate the wilderness of Katmai and the Alaska Peninsula. There is a wilderness for each of us, should we decide to seek it. The journey through it is filled with complexity, ambiguity, and delight. The magic that gleams an instant between us and the wild things is both the recognition of diversity and the need for connection across the illusions of form. It is nature's cry to far-wandering, insatiable humankind. Do not forget your brethren, nor the green woods and grasslands whence you sprang. The hope of life is that new things come, new senses try the unfamiliar air. We are only one of many appearances of life. We are not its perfect image for it has no image except life itself. And life is exuberant and emergent in the stream of time. 